I'm Jean Abrust, and I'm the author of the MicroCOS series of software and books. Um, I also write numerous articles. I lecture at conferences. I've been to Embedded World, Embedded Systems Conference, uh, ARM TechCon, and so on, so on. Do I did a lot of training also uh, specifically on RTOSs and embedded systems. So let's get into what is an RTOS. So the simplest definition I have for an RTOS is software that manages the time and resources of a CPU. So the application is split, split into multiple tasks. Each task uh, is responsible for one aspect of your embedded system. And the RTOS's job is to, is to run the most important task that's ready to run. So here I show a list of tasks that are ordered by priority and the CPU could only execute one task at a time, and it will execute the task that has the highest priority that is also eligible or ready to run on the CPU. So, uh, and then the RTOS switches between tasks when the high priority task is no, a, no longer able to run because it's waiting for an event to occur. So I will actually explain that uh, shortly. So again, the different, uh, perspective of as what to, is an RTOS, it's code that you add to your application to provide services. So an RTOS is either provided in source form or as a library that you link to your code. Most RTOSs that I know uh, are written in C and assembly language is needed to adapt the RTOS to different CPU architectures and that's called a port. Now, um, most RTOSs unfortunately are not don't understand the uh, the architecture of CPU, so that's why you need that RTOS uh, CPU uh, independent section of code, which is typically written in assembly language. A slightly different view of this is uh, is is here. So you you have your application code that invokes services from the RTOS, and those services have to do with task management, time management, messages, uh, memory blocks, and so on. And uh, optionally, the, the, the other middleware component that I explained before, TCP IP, GUI, and file system, they all typically request services from the RTOS to, to get themselves to run on the CPU, to schedule themselves to run on the CPU. So there's quite a lot of benefits if you're into the, if you're new to RTOSs, why would you want to use one? So it creates a framework for developing applications that facilitates uh, teams of multiple de developers. Each developer could be concentrating on one aspect of the embedded system. It allows you to split and prioritize the application code. As I mentioned before, the RTOS always runs the most important task that's ready to run. And in fact, adding low priority tasks won't affect the responsiveness of your system to high priority tasks. Uh, and an RTOS, is designed or, or your application is designed so that tasks always wait for events to happen. So a, if the event has not happened, the RTOS does not consume uh, or the, the task does not consume any CPU time for while waiting for the event. So it avoids the polling uh, problem that uh, non-RTOS based systems have. So it's also possible to meet all the deadlines of an application. There's a book called uh, A Practitioner's Guide or Handbook for re uh, Real-Time Analysis. It talks about rate monotonic analysis. It's a 500 page book. It starts fairly easy to understand, but then it gets a little bit complicated as, as they demonstrate the concepts of RMA. So most art tosses have gone uh, have undergone thorough testing. Some, some are third party certifiable and even certified. So, uh, DO178B uh, level A, for example, micro COS2 has been certified for that, for IEC 61508, for medical 62304, and so on. So it's very unlikely that you'll find a bug in commercial RTOS. In fact, when at, when at Micrium, people used to call us and say, oh, I think I found a bug in the, in the operating system. We say, well, quite unlikely, but let's, let's talk about it. And sure enough, we always found it. It was between uh, their chair and their screen that the problem resided. Um, so RTOS uh, typically support many different CPU architectures. In fact, uh, the MicroCOS 2 supported at some point over 50 CPU architectures. So it's fairly easy to, to take the RTOS APIs and map that to a different processor. It's a matter of 
a few hundred lines of code. It's fairly straightforward. And having an RTOS also makes it quite easy to add power management, specifically when the RTOS has nothing to do because none of the tasks are uh, ready to run, then the RTOS runs the idle task, which finally could be put into a, a sleep mode where it won't consume as much CPU power. And an event wakes that up and, and runs the CPU and the RTOS schedule the next task. Uh, so again, an RTOS provides services to the application, as I showed on the block diagram, task management, ISR management, inner task communication, memory management, and so on. So again, our tosses make it easy to add middleware components. So there are certainly some drawbacks when you're using an RTOS. One of them is a, the RTOS itself is code and thus requires more flash. But typically on most MCUs, that's not a problem because that requires between 6 and 20 kilobytes of, of, of code space, which is really not a problem for most MCUs. The biggest problem is that NARTOS requires extra RAM because each task requires its own stack space. So the stack pointer is constantly changed from one task to the other when the RTOS decides to run a different task. So each task having its own stack space, you have to calculate how much stack space each of your tasks has to have. Uh, the size of each task uh, stack depends on the application, of course, so that um, that's something that you have uh, you have to determine. So each task also needs to be assigned a task control block. That's something that's handled by the RTOS. Your application never needs to worry about how that happens, but uh, needless to say, it just consumes between 32 bytes and 128 bytes of RAM per task. And then finally, there's about 256 or so bytes or a you know, quarter kilobyte of uh, RAM space for RTOS variables. So in internal variables that the RTOS needs to keep track of what's going on. So you have the responsibility of assigning priorities, uh, deciding on what priorities to give uh, task is not always trivial. So that's something you'll have to you'll have to figure out. Uh, again, the RMA book would, would be able to ex explain a little bit more in detail as to how you could do some of that. Um, so the services provided by the RTOS consume CPU time. So typically, if you're doing your system well, if you're using the RTOS properly, uh, the RTOS itself, the code that executes for the RTOS services, takes between 2 and 5% of the CPU cycle. So it could be more depending on if you're overdoing it or if you're over, overusing the APIs. So you got to bear in mind that calling uh, an RTOS services uh, of the services consumes CPU time. And of course, if you're using an RTOS, well, you have a learning curve associated with the RTOS you select. There are probably a hundred different RTOSs around there uh, in the world. Uh, so when you select one, of course, the lingo will be somewhat similar, but the implementation will be different. The, different, the APIs will be different. So you have to get up to speed with the different lingos and the different, uh, different APIs. So the big question is, do you need an RTOS? Do you have some real-time requirements? Now, because an RTOS consume time, it will not give you back time. It will actually consume time in order to actually schedule the CPU to run the most important task that you have in your application. So, um, so real-time kernel means that I'm going to run the most important real-time task before I run less important less time critical tasks. So that's the whole purpose of the RTOS. So do you have independent tasks? So you have a user interface, control loop, communications. Uh, you have all kinds of things that you could run somewhat independently. So control loop, of course, needs input for potentially from a, a user interface to tell it what set points to have. But in general, the control loop run pretty much independently uh, to the user interface once those uh, settings have been established. So do you have tasks that could starve other tasks? So for example, if you're having a display, uh, if you're using a single threaded model, uh, not, not using an RTOS, then a display could consume a tremendous amount of time updating uh, the graphics on the display. And then of course, that would starve everything else that would uh, work uh, in, in conjunction with the, uh, the graphical display. Uh, receive an e receiving an ethernet frame also consume a fair amount of of time, there's 1,500 bytes of data to potentially process, so TCP/IP stacks are fairly uh, 
uh, CPU intensive encryption and so on. Uh, do you have multiple programmers working on different portions of your project? If so, then having an RTOS helps because each one can concentrate on their application and not worry about the whole system. Now, at some point, somebody needs to put all that together and say, well, the most important thing in this particular product is the control loop. The user interface is not that important. Communication is, you know, next in import in importance and so on. So you have to decide from a system point of view, how your all, whole system uh, put is put together, but individual programmers could pretty much concentrate on their aspect of the embedded system. Uh, so do you, do you need to use additional middleware components? Again, protocol stacks, uh, GUI file system, and so on. Having an RTOS helps orchestrate the whole thing uh, when, when you have those components. Uh, the big thing is, do you have enough RAM? That's probably the number one thing I would say that would say, well, maybe if I, if I only have one kilobyte of RAM, well, forget about using an RTOS because uh, it, it's going to consume that just for a few, a few of your tasks, plus the internal requirements of the RTOS itself. So uh, typically, I'd say for a fairly small embedded system, if you have above eight kilobytes of, of RAM, of which you could dedicate probably half of that 4K for for the RTOS uh, RAM usage uh, for task stacks and stuff, then you may be you may be good to go. But below that, it's probably not recommended. And if you're using a 32-bit CPU, I would highly recommend that you consider using an RTOS because it will give you uh, a lot of benefits with the 32-bit CPU, which is pretty much the norm nowadays. A lot of applications are are, are not designed with eight or 16-bit uh, processors. Thank you for your patience. Uh, hopefully I didn't talk too quickly and hope you enjoyed it. And if there's any question, you got my email, feel free to email me. I'd be happy to answer.